years in millions of homes. A man loved a woman, a child it was born. It learned how to hurt and it learned how to cry like humans do. I'm breathing in, I'm breathing in. Hi, I'm Tommy Rocket and welcome to the 197th Tommy Rocket Show. We're here today with Dr. Timothy Ravinas, 50 years in practice, Peter Phipps. He is a journalism professor at URI and we are here today with the hot topic of toxic masculinity. It's so hot, everybody's talking about it and so are we. Mm -hmm. Peter, tell me, how did you come up with this topic? I don't know if I did, I think you did, Tommy. Did I? Yeah, but oh, you I know, I think what we wanna say straight out is that uh, we're three men. That's it. Of three white guys, we're old guys, three white, and, we've, and we're gonna talk about an issue that's important to us, it's important to the people in our lives, it's important to the society. And we are a stylist mm -hmm. actor, yes, a newsman, yes. as a kid I would call it that, and a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. who was at the VA for a long, long time, helping a lot of men deal I've with a lot of problems. I also work with children and adolescents, and I still consult to a group home for boys. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we're not experts, but no. we're three men who, who are all affected by this. And care about it, and we're yes. going to talk about ourselves, and we're going to talk about uh -huh. what we're going on with, what's going on. I, I think, um, you know, it's always good to start with a joke. Well, we'll do it. Now, whether, you could argue whether this is an example of a toxic male or not, but George Carlin always has an answer to every question. Here's all you have to know about men and women. Women are crazy, men are stupid. And the main reason women are crazy is that men are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, uh, you, this phrase, I think it existed in probably a lot of feminist literature uh, for many, many years. Mm -hmm. It has surfaced in the mainstream. Yes. Uh, and no better example of that, I think, uh, is this Gillette commercial that was out, I think, in January, and it's mm -hmm. now been seen uh, 65 million times. And I don't know if the audience has I seen didn't it. see it myself. It but. is, uh, basically, it talks about toxic masculinity. Uh, is it, it out in the mainstream television? I don't think anymore, but no, it's, not anymore, but it's you viral, guess. as they say. And it, it talks about this problem. So for the viewers, they could maybe pick it up on YouTube of or course. something. Of course. Yes, it right just up. Gillette just Toxic put, Masculinity. Yeah, put it. Gillette in there. It'll come oh, okay. Right. And, and what is it like? We'll, we'll, well, it basically makes the point, I think, Gillette, we believe that the best can men can be is better than men have been. I think it's, it's mm -hmm. a theme of theirs. And it, it shows all kinds of, uh, you know, it talks about the Me Too business. It has boys rampaging uh, through the set a couple of times. It, it deals with sexism. It deals with uh, uh, men encouraging violence among their sons. Uh, it reminds us that the boys watching today will be the men tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And there's um, also some very good corrective examples of men yes. and the way they treat and one another well, and boys in a non-toxic way. Right. It has a, there's a one scene where the men are all lined up at the grill. You know, they, they play with images and their men are at the grill. And then, Middle America. And it's boys will be boys, boys will be boys, and it goes down the line, everyone's at their, their grill, and then a couple boys start fighting. And one of the men steps out and says, no, no, we don't want to deal with problems that way. And, and it's, so I think, you know, there's pushback and stuff, but I think the point is, is that this isn't just a polemic, this is a fact that, that men uh, commit suicide at a greater percent. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a recent statistic, deaths between 15 and 24, 75% are men. That's are staggering, poor. that and is. Why is that? Because we often drive crazy, we drink too much, we get into fights, we take risks, mm. and why? And why? Because, why? Uh, because we're being men, right? As we're being taught to be men somehow. And look at all the examples of gun violence, for example. All men are the perpetrators. Mm. Yeah, yeah that's scary. 85% of yeah. murders are committed by men. Now why is that? It's not 55, is 45, it? it's 85. Or, you know, the FBI statistics are the FBI statistics. Mm -hmm. Men, uh, 
our sense of masculinity and our sense of our man it's, we, we, is leading to violence against others and we're doing harm to ourselves. Yeah. Uh, and the mass murders we see all, all perpetrated men. by men. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I mean, what can you think of as an example where that's not true? Uh, there have been female well, suicide bombers someplace. But in America, but, every mm -hmm. mass from serial Timothy killers, McVeigh, serial killers. They're all men. Mm -hmm. and, and I would say, so they're all men, and it all comes back to some sense of gender. And suicide is, is the most clear example. Uh, men, more suicides are men. Mortality rate, less and getting worse as time goes along. Men's mortality rates, actuarials, are getting better. Men's are going down. All kinds of illnesses, addictions are more common in, in men. Right. Um, and uh, although women have a number of illnesses that they're exposed to because they're women, men still have a higher mortality rate. And, and I think what's changed, and the reason why this was a good show, Tommy, is that people are talking about this. They're mm -hmm. talking about this issue. Because uh, it's become so disturbing, they have to. It's in the mainstream. Yeah. I mean, why is it when you stop and think, look at all these statistics? Well, why is that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Uh, there's even mm -hmm. a, uh, a British rocker named Fender who has a song called Dead Boys. It's been streamed three million, four million times. To, and bemoaning what is the it? fact it's called Dead Boys. Yeah. It's a song about male suicide, and no one seems to care about it. It's just going mm -hmm. on. And look at how music has changed, it, it, albeit in the middle of the last century, the 20th century, it, the popular music was all about romance. And now it's, a lot of it is consumed with violence right. and, mm -hmm. and sexism. And, and uh, sexism, particularly uh, uh, men versus women. I Do wonder what that, what does that come from? Like, I, I'm trying to understand why is it that men are expected to live up to these very macho male images, but I don't think, it, because it's obvious, they can't do this. Not everybody can be this super image of a male that society wants us to be. And I'm thinking, where did that even come from? Well, there are a lot of men who feel disenfranchised and disempowered these days. The, the middle of the last century, uh, there were jobs uh, booming, the economy was booming, booming. Yes, the economy may be strong now, but the, uh, but the jobs are much more menial than before. Men have much less command over, um, over sense of self, uh, sense of self-worth. Um, it's different. Things have changed. And that's what we have to think about when we're going to try to help men uh, get a sense of self and a sense of um, being able to participate equal, at least equally in society and be leaders. I mean, t I mean, you ever ask, I think people are asking the question, well, why? To your exact question. Well, yeah. why is it that men, we've all, I know I have, I've bought car insurance for my daughters and my son. I paid a lot more for my son's car insurance. Mm. Because they think men are aggressive drivers. Well, no, they, they don't even care about that. They have had actuarial tables to tell them that men get in more accidents and cause them more money. So I got to pay more. Well, why is that? Why? What, what why? is it? Yeah, what is it about well, being a male? I think it's only fair to say we only have to get behind the wheel of car today and see how aggressive many men are, aggressively many men are driving now. Uh, and how they exceed the speed limit. Not that women drivers don't have their difficulties too, but men tend to be the more bullies and have more road rage on the road. And think about car commercials. Think about truck commercials. It's sold to men by driving recklessly. And they all have a little thing, don't try this at home or something. But of course, people do mm -hmm. because it... So you think the car advertisements promote aggressive male behavior? Oh, for sure. To sell well, vehicles. They sell, and they sell, they're all advertising for huge vehicles now. Vehicles that are, you like them or not like them as you will, they consume more fossil fuels. Um, they uh, tend to be more aggressive on the road. Monster trucks. They're big. You can't, anybody driving a small car can't, doesn't see around them anymore. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So the roads have changed, and a lot of it has to do with a kind of toxic masculinity because we're, men have to prove themselves, and this is one mm -hmm. of the ways that men make an effort, and this is from a psychiatrist's point of view, to prove that they're more masculine, more powerful. And I think and what's changed is that people are trying to address it. And this summer, now this is your field, Timmy, uh, the American Psychological Association came out with a 30-page guide for therapists to help their male, their young men and male clients, and they, you know, and it was all about how to deal with this sense of masculinity that was hurting others and hurting themselves. And this is a, it was a big deal, and I think it started it a lot of it. Out. And I think it started a lot of this. You know, I think that would be a point. I think, well, where's the, how has the conversation changed? I think they, uh, maybe you, they helped change the conversation. They, they did help change the conversation. I think we need to know that there's a big backlash uh, to, these, to these definitions because there's a resistance to change. But this is how civilization changes. And men and masculinity has to change if this planet is to survive. We've got to do more conservation uh, of all our resources, and, and we need to work with women cooperatively and not competitively. What, was, what were some of the highlights of that study, the, the, the points that? Well, a few of the highlights, I would say, is that, that early socialization of negative male values plays a big role in this. We talk about nature versus nurture, um, we teach boys uh, gender roles. There is, yes, there are biological differences between men and women, but it, and men tend to be more aggressive because their hormones tend to make them more aggressive. But those are roles that are important for men to play in society and in primitive societies, but they don't need to be distorted. Uh -huh. um, by culture. Oh, go amok. Yeah. Yeah. They, no, need, they need to be channeled. And mm -hmm. men can be aggressive, leaders, warriors, but in peacetime, they need to be different. Mm -hmm. That's true. And we'll come back with the second segment of the Tommy Rocket Show after these messages. Okay. You hear people say it all the time. Someone else will do it. Someone else will donate blood. Because someone needs blood every two seconds. I'm happy to do it. It's just that it's a lot for one person to take on. Good night. Good night. People go, fish don't have feelings. Like, have you ever seen a fish gasping for breath when you take it out of the water? They're saying, thanks a lot for killing me. It feels great, you know? No, it hurts. Hi, and welcome back to the second segment of the Tommy Rocket Show. As you know, we're here with Dr. Timothy Ravinas and Peter Phipps. Peter, what were we talking about? We were talking about the American Psychological Association. Right, and Timmy just began sort of reviewing what they gave is counsel and advice mm -hmm. to the therapists of America to help mm -hmm. their clients. Like uh, what? Like what specifically? Sure. Yeah, it's important to pick this up because I think this has generated um, a lot more of the discussion in the last year or so that the um, a distinguished organization like the American Psychological Association has come up with a statement that they feel is going to be important in helping males in their development and helping us as a culture with male development. Uh -huh. Another point besides the early socialization of negative ideals and how we have to work to oppose that is to deal specifically with the connection between masculine culture and violence, both physical violence, verbal violence, and sexual violence, uh -huh. all of which need to be addressed. and. It's important for us to understand as a society and teach our, our younger, younger males uh, that we need to ch make changes in this area. We need to lower the rates of date rape and rape 
Uh, we need to reduce the number of accidents on the road. We need to do something about male, male involvement with gun violence. So we need to make sure that males in general need to know about these connections and it's our responsibility to do something about them. When they're them. young especially. When, when they're young and also because we're role models at an older age, we need to take care of our young. We bring young people into the world. Our job as parents and as a society is to help them shape society of the future. So I think those are, are going to be important things. Another is prevention. How are we going to deal with the risk factors? And the APA is very clear. They give a list um, that seems very um, comprehensive. Dealing with exposure to violence at home, in relationships, in the media, in the community, and in the world, in world politics. Poor family functioning, families that are struggling, single parent families, families who are poor or isolated in some way or other, families where substance abuse is an issue, mm -hmm. families where there have been intergenerational violence. There may have been violence in generations before, and there it's for us to become within the family a norm, and how do we reverse that cascade, how do we reverse that cycle of violence that cascades down generations. And they want therapists to help correct this through therapy. Exactly. I mean, men are much more likely, and I speak as a professional here too, much more likely uh, to turn uh, for therapy of their own, and I think we will talk about our own experience with that, and, they're, uh, bo and in families, boys are much less likely to be referred for counseling or for anger management unless they're referred by the law. Which Why is, is that? Well, it's because it's gone too far and because that's part of the norm that we're trying to reverse mm -hmm. now. That is why the APA and I certainly endorse their ideas, uh, as many do, to say that men need to change this pattern and it's culturally entrained, it's, fa it's uh, entrained within families, and it's true of the world that the way to solve problems is to use violence and aggression. You and know, um, we, should, we need to talk about ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and we all had male role models in our lives. We, we all learned some variety of masculinity. And in my case, I think I was not, I grew up, my father died when I was young, four, almost not quite five. I didn't have any in the house male role models. So uh, my, uh, I think it's, masculinity became poisonous to me, for me in my life, because I didn't deal with my feelings. I didn't, I wasn't honest with myself. I wasn't able to ask for help. I wasn't able uh -huh. to um, feel or cry or, or or, and I couldn't model that for my children because I couldn't do it myself. And you hadn't had models of your own, nor did you have a chance to find out how to be honest with yourself. Well, it took later life when things broke, you know, and then you went to therapy uh -huh. and you started to get aware uh -huh. of yourself and ask questions and listen and, and, and that, and, um, but, but you were very impressionable at those ages. You needed to have a positive male it's, role. It's everybody, everybody knows this. I was sitting in a class one day. We were going to teach gender in advertising. And I, and I had a bunch of video. And I said, well, you know, before I, t you tell me, masculinity, what's it mean? And they said, it means you're hard, you're tough. You don't, you know, you, you, you're aggressive. Mm -hmm. and, and, okay, then what's feminine? Oh, you're, you're take, you take, you're caring, you're sensitive. They had the whole thing down it off the top of their head. They knew exactly what the roles are and what they're supposed to be. And, um, and then, you know, it's, so it's not, it's not something we don't know, but the point is it's harmful. It's harmful the, for the men and for the women and the other men around them. Mm -hmm. It's not good Especially for if us. it's negative, especially if it's negative images. When I was a kid, my father was extremely violent. He was extremely violent. And when I was young, I didn't know exactly when I was very young how to discern right from wrong. So I automatically thought what, all men normal were. normal or not normal? No, I didn't know because when you're little, you only know what you see. 
Mm. You don't know about the world because you're not exposed to it yet. I thought, because of what I was exposed to, that all men were aggressive, all men were negative, and to be afraid. When I was young, I was afraid of all men because I thought they were all just like my father mm. because that's all you know is what's in your home. So that was one of, one of the negative things I got from that toxic male behavior I grew up with. I, it made me afraid of all men, and I didn't get to know the positive things about men, the positive things that come from being masculine, because I didn't know any of them. They, mm. they weren't a part of my life, so that's how I suffered. How do you think you learned them, though? That's, that's Well, I the learned dilemma. them from being moderately aware about of the world around me as i got to be older i met men that were strong and masculine in a positive way men that were masculine and loving toward their children i got to learn from observing because i was lucky enough to be able to meet men in my life that were positive and masculine in a nurturing way i was lucky in that way because when i was young i didn't know that existed because all I had when I was young was all this negative male stuff around me. And then in school, it was worse because, you know, I was young and I was bullied in school for being gay. And well, there were toxic males in school. I mean, and which bullying never was reprimanded when I was in school. Bullies were okay. And some of the teachers were bullies. Mm. So it was all around me. I was lucky, though, that as I got older, I, I learned how to figure it out. It wasn't easy. Growing up for me was, uh, I was born on the first day of the Second World War, so I was born to a world at war, oh, God. At, which went on for the next seven years of my life. And my father was in the Navy. He rose to a position of captain in the Navy, which is a pretty exalted position, uh, partly because he was in combat most of the time. And so I always revered my father, but I never really knew him for the first seven years of my life. So he was absent as a role model because he was serving his country and fighting a war, which is one of the necessary parts of male aggression. If we're called on to fight for our values, then we go. But then how do you return from war and be a peaceful parent? And I have to say, my father was very successful in that. He was so successful that he had a job that took him abroad, and so I didn't know him very well, even after he came back from the war. So that was, that was difficult. He was a very charismatic and good person, but I just didn't see much of him. Mm -hmm. I grew so you up grew up without those values? I, I grew up, yeah, without seeing those values at work. Now, at school, it was different. I, there were good values at school. There were good male mom, uh, role models, models, but there were no teachers of how to behave as a boy, how to relate to women, to, uh, to young women as a boy. Sexuality was never taught. The, you know, I'm in the, I was grown up in the classic era of the birds and the bees, which was absolutely useless sex and relationship education. Mm -hmm. so, so there was a big vacuum there. Was there bullying in school when you were little? There, there was some bullying in school, and I have to admit, I was a bully myself, mm -hmm. part, mm -hmm. partly in the absence of knowing any better and being, having corrective action. Fortunately, there were enough teachers and sup supervisors at the school so that they caught me sometimes. Oh, boy. And I got, got the message, and I had to walk around the big mm -hmm. circle at the school to walk, wow. off the, oh boy. walk off the penalties. And I began to get the message, but I knew from an early age that there were things I did not know and that I would need some help for this. I knew something was wrong. So what oh. about... We should talk about yeah. our mothers at some point, I guess, maybe for the next mm. segment. But it, well, but it, yes, but I also, we have a minute left, and I'd like to ask the question, what happens to men that don't fit into society's expectations of what it is to be a man, you know, the way they tell you should be tough and hard and aggressive? What happens to these people that fall short? Well, that's a good question. That's what we need to work on now, because many boys fall short, and many men fall short. They can and get depressed, I bet. They're depressed, their suicide rates are higher. We've covered a lot of the casualties of men, that, that relationships that don't work out, um, 
absence in their own children's lives. 50% of families in the United States grow up without a male figure in the home. How much? 50%. Really? That's a lot. And, and like you said, there are these negative things, uh, gun violence, uh, depression, and, uh, but we only have 15 seconds left, so we're going to have to continue when you come back. And please stay tuned for the third segment of The Tommy Rocket Show with Timmy Ravinas and Peter Phipps. Hi, this is Bill Maher, Politically Incorrect. I can find humor in almost anything, but one thing I never laugh about is cruelty to animals. If you don't get the joke either, write People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, 501 Front Street, Norfolk, Virginia, 23510. Hello, I'm James Cromwell. In recent years, the emergence of factory farms like this one has meant bad news for pigs. The largest U.S. slaughterhouses kill one pig every three seconds. Such an accelerated speed means that millions of animals have their throats slit or are dropped into scalding tanks while they are still conscious. Pigs are sensitive, intelligent animals. Please do your part. Stop eating pigs. Thank you. Hi, and welcome back to the third segment of the Tommy Rocket Show. Uh, in the last segment, we were just discussing a lot of different things, but while the camera was off, we had a conversation with some of the crew members, and they were saying, you know, don't forget that in the 1950s and 60s, a lot of these cartoons we were programmed by were acts of violence amongst male characters. So a lot of these cartoons we grew up watching were violent. I think it's fair to say, too, that, that a lot of the movies were war movies, uh, cowboy movies. Cowboy, where, shoot em up. Shoot em ups, where, we, where men, uh, white men, were encouraged to Kill the Indians. portrayed as killing anybody who was different. Mm. Mm -hmm. So uh, treatment of the other, um, and that crosses lots of lines, gay bashing, um, uh, uh, prejudice against women, prejudice mm -hmm. against kids who were smarter in school than you. Anybody who was different from the right. prototypical role model of being the football captain. And remember, the leading advertising icon of, of that era was the Marlboro Man. Yeah, who was oh, yeah. the solitary man who had no connections didn't mm. feel anything, mm -hmm. could just tough it out all by himself right. and yeah. didn't need other people. I mean, that, that's a, male, men don't need other people. You can, you can do it yourself, mm -hmm. you know? And you can win a if very you're tough. Right. A very sad uh, uh, commentary on the Marlboro Man were the interviews done in the 90s of former Marlboro Men. Right all of them dying of lung cancer. Uh, emphysema and lung cancer. On yeah. emphysema and lung cancer, on oxygen and wasted away, and just shells of their but former cells. this masculinity, and in my case, I wanted to talk about my mother briefly, because she was a single woman, so, uh, but she, so she didn't model any of the traditional, uh, stereotypical, many, uh, maybe some, female characteristics. So she didn't express her feelings, she didn't show that she was upset that she lost her husband. She didn't talk about her loss. She was toughed it out. She had sort of this. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I got, I grew up okay with a, without a male role model. I had to go find them. But my mother had these characteristics of don't show your feelings, don't show vulnerability, mm -hmm. be happy and sort of optimistic and move on. Mm -hmm. uh, and now your mother had a. a very instrumental part in your life is, is uh, different than mine. I mean, mine, I felt sort of left me hollow. Mm -hmm. uh, mine experience was more about learning how to survive, you know, learning how to survive the storm, you know. Uh, you know. How was she helpful in that? Well, it's really hard to give exact examples because they happened so many years ago, but it was, she always taught me how to think positively. You know, things may not be great, but think positively. You know, uh, go outside, be with your friends, you know, you know, uh, do good deeds, you know, talk to older, intelligent people, you know, get information. She, you've told me she's a very wise woman. I, I, I didn't meet your mother, but 
a very wise person she was from very, the sounds of it, she who, was, who lived as a survivor herself. She lived as a survivor of domestic violence, and I believe she also told me when she grew up that, you know, I think she grew up in a toxic environment that was ruled by males also. You know, she lost her mother when she was six years old. She was raised by a father who made all the women qu quit school early because men went to school. The men went to school. The women worked in factories or whatever they did. So they were already taught from the very beginning that women were less and men were more. I had, so, a, I had a good mother uh, who was thoroughly uneducated. Uh, she was beautifully educated in other ways about male behavior. She grew up in a Victorian household, uh, raised by nannies, and really knew nothing about what boys were like and could give me very little feedback. And so in the absence of my father, uh, when he was traveling a lot, I didn't get much feedback for, from her, and I was the oldest of seven, so you, 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 the oldest is supposed to pull their act together and keep on moving. And that's pretty much the message I got, and so I didn't get a lot of feedback from a very good person who just didn't know anything about boys. But then in your professional life, you spent a lot of time with kids, boys and children and men who had been severely damaged by masculinity. I think part of the reason I got good at that is that I worked very hard on my own masculinity. I knew there was something missing early, and uh, through the great fortune of a great supervisor, female supervisor in psychiatry, uh, when I was 24, uh, she said, get into therapy, and I went into psychoanalysis with a really great guy who taught me a lot about my own masculinity because he was a great role model for masculinity himself. Right, we will, you know, and it's, I think the point is if you are opening, you have your eyes open, you can see toxic masculinity, mm -hmm. poisonous masculinity all over the place. We see it everywhere. Mm -hmm. Road rage. That's toxic masculinity, isn't it? Most road rage incidences, I believe, didn't we discuss this earlier, are, are men, yep. you know? You see it on the highways, you see it in the supermarket, you see bullying on the, mm -hmm. on the playground. Uh, the whole Me Too movement is about it's, toxic it's, masculinity, one could say, right? I mean, I, uh, why, why would men think they have a right to harass women? Mm -hmm. Why would they Where think Where does that, that come from? And we've had some very well-publicized people in high places who have harassed women, and the, our culture is allowing that to happen in many ways by electing them or appointing them in positions that they're in now. Uh, and we've got to do better than that if we're going to have a, a future. Is it, excuse me, is it natural for men to be mask to be aggressive? Is that genetic, or is it just taught by society? Well, I talked a little bit about that earlier. It's, that's the nature-nurture um, uh, discussion. And n n nature has made men, by dint of their hormones and the way that their physiology and anatomy operates, has made them stronger. And men are often called, in, called on to take the jobs, and have been in the past, to take on jobs where strength is required. That's changing now, too, because we have more women in the military, we have more women in the police forces, and you see women in you know, construction crews now that you didn't see 25, 50 years ago. That's true, so, firefighters. So, so, so mm -hmm. things are changing, and part of the, our job is to make, is to have a rapprochement with women and make them part of our lives as we become part of their lives. Gender and, equality. Yep. You know that business with they're strong? Um, I, th I think I can almost remember myself. I have babies in the crib, right? And if your son reaches up, your six-month-old son, and grabs your fingers with a lot of power, you, you start to say, oh, you're so strong. Mm -hmm. right? And maybe their brains get molded by all that reinforcement. And your daughter, you know, if they make a joke or laugh or smile sweetly, you you do the same kind of thing. Oh, you're so sweet. I wonder how much of it is you. How much of it is nurture in nature? No one will know. But I'm. I wonder if 
we do a lot of it in ways we don't imagine. Yeah, you know? and, and males and females have some traits uh, that are, but generalities, because there are some tomboy girls who are strong and, and want to play with oh. trucks uh, early on, and some boys who are tender and would rather play with dolls. And our role is not to try to change that, but to nurture that and right. help them but find a Traditionally, niche. you stamp those behaviors out, right? right. You mock, you separate, uh, you ostracize those, the different ones, so that they all fall into this uh -huh. binary, yeah. right? And that's uh, what the APA was talking right. about. And we, we see work these images, we've talked about them everywhere. Uh -huh. Advertising is loaded. One thing that I can't get, military advertising, is, is advertising the place to fix your masculinity. Uh -huh. You ever see those ads? Uh -huh. uh, you know, they're, men being men and saving other people and it's uh -huh. almost like you're in your video game uh -huh. and you're acting like this uh, super successful uh -huh. hard courageous uh -huh. male character and no one can feel I mean if you're honest with yourself am I do I match up do I, am, I, am I inadequate? Am I that masculine? Yeah, yeah. Am I that tough? And so what does the military say, right? The military says, well, we'll make you that tough, right? Yeah, I we'll see. make you a man. That's what they well, say. Right. Or then I want to know is, is, does gay bashing exist because in a way it's like saying, I'm not like you. Like gays, gays obviously don't fit the American stereotype of a macho man. So is that why for years it was okay and you saw an awful lot of gay bashing because it was pushing back against the male image? You got it, and, and that backlash is still happening uh, against the Me Too movement, against the toxic masculinity uh, efforts. Now there are people who are standing up and say, you're insulting the male values. Uh, here, you're taking away our manhood here by suggesting these things. And that kind of feeling of inferiority and sensitivity is something we need to help males with because they are feeling disenfranchised. And we need to, we need to help men in, as a group with that. And we also need to help them be more cooperative and tender. Mm -hmm. Right, with, and feel that they're okay with themselves by... Yeah if they don't match up or if they're not this or you know like uh, just like boys hazing in school what is that all about when they haze kids and they that's the same issue isn't it that they're different they're different. they'll haze the the weak or the the smart or the right. used to be the computer geeks although the, the geeks the, rule now right, so they're the ones with the money things uh -huh. have changed i think hazing is just like organized sort of institutionalized bullying and it has to do with control and humiliation, mm -hmm. and and you lift yourself up if you're in the group that has strength. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and plus don't forget we have the violent images in gaming. You were talking earlier about how these images in video games are very aggressive, and that teaches aggressive male behavior. Sure does. But we'll get back to that and the rest if you stay tuned for the fourth and final segment of the Tommy Rocket Show. So stay tuned to these messages. Hi, I'm Alicia Silverstone with PETA. When it comes to animals, there's no need to be a classroom cut-up. Use your right to refuse to dissect frogs, cats, pigs, even worms. Contact me at PETA for information on exciting, humane alternatives to dissection. They'll help you make the grade without using animals. Remember, biology is the study of life, not death. Hi, and welcome back to the final segment of the Tommy Rocket Show. You know the topic is toxic masculinity. And here in the final segment, we're going to be discussing how can we help deal with this in the future? What will we do to correct this? Peter, we have written here government interaction. Dr. Ravinas, uh, how can schools help the government? You know, well, you know, there's a law that's very controversial, I suppose, Title IX. When I went to uh, high school, women, girls didn't play sports, they were girls. Yeah. Sports are for boys, that's a manly thing. Yeah. Well then comes Title IX, turned the world upside down. What year you know, was that? 1970 something? When, when was Title IX? Well, I don't know. Yeah. But, but it's all different today. Mm -hmm. You have to spend the same amount of money. Of course they have ways to get around it, but there was a classic thing. You, you grew up, you were, you were saying in the break about how 
you would hear things like this, ah, the man's the boss. The man is the boss. You heard that women, growing up. Oh yeah, my mother used to say, you know, when she grew up and, you know, women were second class citizens. Men were the boss, men made the rules, right. the women towed the line and that was it. Right. I think a lot of people, it wasn't just that, a lot of people were brought up with these images. And it's in our women language. Women were powerless, men with a boss and and that's the way it should be because they're stronger and they're yeah. smarter and they're better able to you know, and how can provide how can we move past this I mean can schools help well the American Psychological Association has helped a lot by putting this on the table and making it an issue for all levels uh, of society including schools and uh, I would also say that the Gillette ad is lending a lot to the, the, uh, to Gillette, the discussion. The Gillette ad, I've watched it a couple times. There's one scene, I sometimes have, at home am criticized for being a mansplainer. I don't even know what okay. that means. Well, it's a, it's a, a mansplainer is what, it, there's, a, there's a four second scenario in the Gillette ad where there's a board meeting. So you have a classic board meeting and mm -hmm. there's a long table and a long shot and on two sides surrounded by men. Right? Mm -hmm. And then there's one woman in a black suit and uh, pulled back hair, right? Mm -hmm. and, she, and she is evidently just spoken. And the man, the standing man at the end of the table, right, will, will stand up. He says, well, I think what Evelyn meant by that was this. And he touches her shoulder. That's oh. man. That, that's, so then he mansplains. Uh, the sexism is in the male-dominated, I was at a a talk recently by the, the woman who heads Planned Parenthood. She, she was, the, she was a, a resident, she was in the ER, and um, the paramedics bring in a body, and the first thing she wants to do is, what are the numbers, what's going on, what are the codes, what's happening? And she said every time the paramedics would turn to the tall white man standing next to her. Oh, of course. Who was her medical student, right? That's going oh. on all the time, and in, in, uh, mm. you, you, words creep into our mm -hmm. speech. We'll call mm -hmm. women girls. We, we'll, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll interrupt them and explain. Peter, over 50% of medical school graduates now are women. So things are changing, but they'll still turn to a male nurse uh, to address the Can you tell the me what the doctor, problem is? The What's the di right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so a, a woman who knows how to stand up for herself, like the woman who gave that present presentation, is going to be a great role model for both men and women mm -hmm. about the stature. I of think one of the of things women. we talked about earlier, um, you know, the New York Times came out in the last year. I guess it came. I don't know if it came from their their staff. They they said all these great women. Never got obits in the New York Times. New York Times, the newspaper of record. You know, people uh -huh. rely on. So they started redoing these lost women. Did and, they? And they had a whole special section filled with obituaries of women, great women, never celebrated, and their death was never marked because, frankly, they were women. Uh -huh. right? And and now going forward, you notice it's it's about half and half in the New York Times who the obits who's celebrated. You know, well, well, there's something we can all do. We can all do that. Acknowledge that w women have been scientists and great uh -huh. writers and artists, and uh, but that's something that society is. Uh -huh. Oh, they're women. Well, I think there are a lot of books that are coming out now about great women that sh should be celebrated. Did you see that one about the women at Harvard that created the astronomy charts? Yep. And the computer pro early computer programmers were women, and, and there's been a lot of stuff mm -hmm. about that. But there's mm -hmm. a, there's something we can do as mm -hmm. a society. It's true. They do ignore women a lot. Do you ever go into a restaurant with a bunch of people at the table? They always hand the man the check. The man gets the check. There you are. I remember I going. Think, to, I remember going to a baseball game with my daughter, and we were at McCoy Stadium, and she looks out. Any women playing there? She said. Any women on the field? She wanted to know. Well, well no, they hand me the no, check, I Tommy. I give it to the woman. <laughs> you give it back to the yeah. woman. Yeah. Well, I think when they bring you a check, they should put it in the middle of the table. Yeah, right. And then see who jumps on it. Yeah. <laughs> but right. now here we have, uh, it starts with us. We need to change our own behavior as three men, you know, because, you know, it, it Chinese change starts well with us, you know, and people will see that, and who knows, maybe it'll... Yeah. 
mo modeling, really important. Yeah. I've, got a, I've got a couple of very short poems I want to read you that are examples of, of male modeling and how even under difficult circumstances it might, it, it's, it, you can be a positive male model. This is Good. a poem by Robert Bly. When a father, absent, during the day returns home at six, his children receive only his temperament, not his teaching. So you don't lecture your kids, you just come on kindly and yeah. show them an example of a good well, man. In the culture there is a line, it appears on television, it appears in the culture, we all know it, wait, now this was never in my household because I didn't, wait till your father comes home. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now that's, oh that's I a, remember that. That's an, that's oh, an example of toxic masculinity, it sure deeply is. embedded in the language You're going the to be punished right. by your yes. father. Right. Right. What's the other poem? The bad, the bad cop. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the other is by the 8th century uh, famous Sufi poet Rumi. Mm. Pray for a good instructor to hear and act and stay with you. We have been busy accumulating solace. Make us afraid of how we were. Mm -hmm. Corrective action. Right. Change. So we can all do that those things. That makes you think, things. doesn't it? The, um, well, you know, there are, and there's a business out there too. There's, a, there's, a, um, there's an organization in Providence at Dave Ault called the Center for Sexual Pleasure and Health. Last fall, they had, I think it cost money, I don't know, but four classes, workshops. Sign up for the workshop, toxic masculinity. And they talked about uh, self-awareness and consent and communication, and, and they talked about masculinity and sexual health and allyship, allyship, they called it, and activism. And that's you, probably online. I if guess people some wanted of it to is, Google it or find you, out. Or. So you can go to a workshop, I guess. Uh -huh. You can talk among your production uh -huh. staff between breaks at, at the Tommy Rocket Show. And, when it's on YouTube. Yes. How about right. five, you, you, mentioned, five. you mentioned schools, Tommy. There are no now curricula for both girls and boys on, on uh, interaction, peaceful interaction, cooperative interaction between one another, projects, doing projects together with girls and boys, um, appropriate sexuality uh, given in uh, co-educational uh, classes as well as uni-educational classes for boys. There are very well-developed curricula now that are, that are really good. In some schools? In, in more and more schools. We need, to, we need to fund our teachers and our schools better so we can get this kind of curricula into the, into their, um, into the school programming. But uh, the work has been done. The availability is there. We just need, as a society, to advocate for it. And you know, we have a we have this wheel here. But but um, people and the planet. One could argue that the environmental movement, which is uh, a huge uh, idea and concern of m billions of people, I suppose, is a sort of a rejection of toxic masculinity. Even the word toxic plays both ways in, in that. Context. I mean, mm -hmm. what are men are builders and makers and breakers, right? And and but we have to we have to care for our planet. I mean, there's I think there's a big issue that goes on just with the environment. And don't you think there's an industry there to be had? I mean, look at how the medical industry is growing. It's really a business now, but that's a human business, and we need to take our care of our planet in right. the same way. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I have listed here um, five ways to deal with toxic masculinity, but I think we may have already addressed that. I think we've covered a lot of them. We've covered a lot of that, and um, a role model of survival. Well, that was, you're talking about your yes. mother in a sense about yes, thinking positively true. in the face of, mm -hmm. of violence. Uh, you know, I. I I really think it's, we just have to examine ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, and admit, and admit when you've made your mistakes. There was a yeah. recent story in the New York Times by a psychologist raising his son and, and, under, and realizing what kind of messages he was um, uh, conveying to his son. And, and his mm -hmm. answer was, I just have to listen to him. Mm -hmm. I, we have to ask real questions and listen. We have to admit that we are 
sad about things, that we have feelings, they matter. We, we have to, when we are hurting, we have to be able to seek help and talk mm -hmm. about it. Like, so what are we doing today? We're talking about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I don't think we can prescribe the answers. I mean, no, necessarily, but. no. We need to make the priorities, though, is what you say. And I, I would simply echo that we need to make it as as a society, we need to make it a priority that we're going to change the role of masculinity as best we can and help those who are having a hard time changing. Yes, it, to bring out the most positive things about being masculine into our society. Yeah, and if, male, if men feel inferior or disenfranchised, they lash back and we need to get them, get people jobs, we need to get an economy that's going for everybody and not just the rich, mm -hmm. uh, really important to do. So with 30 seconds left, in the last segment, does anybody have anything to say for the last 30 seconds? Because I know... I think it's us, you just, I think you have to start with yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it does, and that grows out like the Thoreau's image of throwing a pebble in a pool, the rings go outward, and we just got to do our best uh, with this, and we encourage all males to do the same. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank everybody. Thank the viewers, thank Dr. Avenis, thank Peter Phipps, and thank you all for watching, because this is how it all begins. And stay tuned for the next Tommy Rocket Show, and maybe we'll continue this topic. Thank you all. So You hear people say it all the time. Someone else will do it. Someone else will donate blood. Because someone needs blood every two seconds. I'm happy to do it. It's just that it's a lot for one person to take on. Good night. Good night.